of the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton. With David Forrester and his orchestra, our singing star Anita Ellis, Gigi Pearson, Verna Felton, Pat McGeehan, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. <laughs> It's a pleasure to bring you Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Raleigh Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, Rod? Oh, fine. How are you feeling, Red? I got a cold. Well, take care of it. Uh, I am. I've had it for five days. Still good as new. <laughs> Well, I hear Mr. Raleigh's gone back to Louisville. Yeah. Do you have any trouble getting train reservations? Well, a little. The Santa Fe, all he had for him was an upper berth. I remember those things when I was in Vaudeville, upper berths. Me too, brother. I never could get undressed in one of them. No, I remember one night when I tried. I put one arm around my head, the other behind my leg like this, and I give a fast, quick turn like that, and bingo! You were undressed. No, I tied Boy Scout knot number six. <laughs> Well, Mr. Raleigh had a lot of fun, I guess, and he's taking a lot of memories back to Louisville. Yeah, Metro Goldwyn Mayor Studios, the La Brea Tar Pits, Mr. Beaumont, everything, you know. <laughs> and that model I introduced him to. Yeah, there's something I'd like to ask you about her. Well, what is it? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. What is it? <laughs> Don't you know any girls with teeth? <laughs> Boy, what a girl. She, uh, cotton stockings, you know. Either she's overconfident or she just don't care. One of the... <laughs> hey, how much does she weigh anyhow? 280, I guess. <laughs> 280. <laughs> You're not kidding. She put on a yellow dress and seven guys went, <laughs> Actually... <laughs> was the hit of the spring fashion show. Mm-hmm. Say, by the way, did you get a glimpse of the new spring fashions? Yeah, those hats are wearing the silliest women, you know. <laughs> I saw one made up specially for California women. Really? What did it look like? Yeah, it was two avocados and some lemon peelings and grapefruit rind with a snow shovel offset by fog lights with two smudge pots on each side. <laughs> no matter what happens, she'll be ready. <laughs> Say, you know, I read where material for clothes will come from wood, you know, real wood fabric. Really? Clothes made out of wood, huh? Mm-hmm. That ought to put a lot of chiselers back to work. <laughs> hey, Father. <Bob. laughs> wood fabric's not new. I remember when I was a kid, I had a lumber jacket. <laughs> How'd that get in there? <laughs> Say, speaking of clothes, I uh, went to that tailor you told me about. Well, how'd you like the suit he made for you? You know, the one of the plants and the accordion pleats in the front? Did mm-hmm. you like them? No, every time I stoop over the place, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> because of the shortage, the, the pants don't have any suspender buttons or belt straps. <laughs> <laughs> suspender buttons. <laughs> well, how's he expect you to hold them up? You ever heard of the clutching hand? <laughs> well, how's the material? I got cut out in the rain today with it. Well, what happened? You ever try putting your pants on with a shoehorn? <laughs> Well, anyway, it was better than that uh, suit you were wearing when you got discharged from the Army. Where did you get that? Blue and white tweed, or blue and pink tweed. Yeah, you almost loused me up, didn't you? sure did. (laughs) That wasn't blue and pink tweed. Those were moth holes, and the pink part was me. (laughs) Now, medical science offers you proof Positive. Yes, medical science offers you proof positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Yes, exhaustive scientific tests of America's six biggest-selling brands based on a method used by the United States government. Tests certified by a jury of 14 distinguished doctors, including throat specialists, have proved conclusively... No other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars, so no other is safer to smoke. Yes, Raleigh's are right. Right for taste, right for throat. So enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos, that smoother, more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science now offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother better-tasting Raleigh. 
now our lovely Anita Ellis will sing Atlanta, G.A. I love the morning glories growing And the breezes softly blowing in Atlanta, G.A. I love to wake up in the morning See the sun come up at dawn And in Atlanta, G.A. I love to walk among the flowers And taste the honey from the bees I want to while away my hours Reading books and dreaming dreams beneath the trees I want to see the ivy cling, want to hear the robin sing and little songs I adore. I want to attend the Sunday meeting, want to hear that friendly greeting when I get home once more. I long to hold that certain someone, I miss him more and more each day. I'm getting ready for a wedding, gonna get the train that's heading for Atlanta, G.A. I'm gonna see the ivy clinging, wanna hear the robin singing little songs I adore. I wanna attend the Sunday meeting, wanna hear that friendly greeting when I get home once more. I long to hold that certain someone I miss him more and more each day I'm getting ready for a wedding Gonna get the train that's heading for Atlanta For Atlanta Tonight we fan the pages of the skeleton scrapbook of satire to stories entitled The Traffic is Terrific. Our characters are fictional. If there's any similarity to persons you know, don't brag about it. <laughs> Chapter 102 is title, entitled uh, Getting a Driver's License. <laughs> If they're afraid to give you a driver's license, either you're stupid or Klim Kadiddlehopper, the fellow from the country. I have my new car over that I just bought to see Sarah do. Spend my last dime to buy this car. Of course, I ain't complaining. Where else could you get a better buy for ten cents? Or <laughs> well, there's somebody coming down the middle of the road now. There's a sight you very seldom see. Especially in California, a pedestrian standing up. Howdy, Clay. Well, Sarah do. Howdy duty to you, too. <laughs> Well, it's a sport coupe, if you please. Well, here's a convertible. Yeah, you put the top down, you got the nicest garbage can you ever wanted. <laughs> How'd you like to take a little ride with me, hmm? Well, I don't know, Clem. Oh, can you drive? Can I drive? No. <laughs> you women expect a man to do everything, don't you? <laughs> A driver's license? Well, can't say that I have, no. Well, then you can't drive without one. Hmm? Oh, come on, Clem. I'm going to take you down to get a driver's license. Okay. I'll hop in the car. Yeah. This door won't close. I wonder what's keeping it from catching. You didn't give me a chance to pull my ears in. <laughs> well, here we go. I gotta do 
something about that ping in the engine. <laughs> A little bicarbonate, if you ask. Well, here we are at the Department of Motor Vehicles. Yep, here, here we are. Oh, Clem, Clem, why are you panting? There's no floorboard on my side. <laughs> There's women all the way down here. Well, come on, let's go in and get our license. Okay, it's much to take you. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'm Clem Cadillhofer. Sorry, I can't do anything for that. <laughs> Officer, Clem wants to get a license. The Humane Society is next door. <laughs> now, I ain't no dog. Well, I'm sorry I made that mistake. I guess I was thrown off by his cocker spaniel ears. Now, just a minute. <laughs> I don't have corker spaniel ears either. <laughs> I got him tucked in my collar here. <laughs> well, do you both want to take a driver's test? Uh, no, just him. Well, miss, you wait over there, and I'll take care of your boyfriend. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait out in the car. Okay, kid. <laughs> well, first I'll have to test your eyes, all right? Sit down and face the eye chart, Mr. Cadiddle Hipper. Cadiddle Hopper's your name. <laughs> Just swallow your tongue. It's easier to say that. <laughs> all right, Adam Brain. Okay. Put your hand over your left eye and read what you see on that chart. Okay. I'm finished. I want you to read it aloud. Well, can't you read? Yes, I can read, but I want you to read it. All right. Let's see now. Never came across words like them in Peter Rabbit. There must be some mistake. I wanted the license so I could drive in the United States. Them words there kind of throw me. The first two look familiar, though. They used to play football for Notre Dame, didn't they? Come on, come on. Read that eye chart. Don't you want to pass this test? That's a good idea. Let's pass this one and go to the next one, huh? How can you be so dumb and still stay alive? Oh, no, I ain't telling you. <laughs> Never give away my professional secrets, I don't know. Well, here, see if you can fill out this questionnaire. All right, let's see now. That first question, that's a pretty hard one there. I should have studied up on it, I guess. Well, all it asks is your name. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me any hints. I'll get it from Michelle. All right, all right. Answer this question. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're crossing an intersection and another car pulls out in front of you, yeah. what do you do? Have an accident? <laughs> Try this one. Mm -hmm. When a pedestrian enters the crosswalk, do you drive by or slow down? That's a very good question. <laughs> Is she a blonde? <laughs> We're not getting anywhere with this. Now, let's go out to your car and see if you can pass the driving test. Okay. Come on now, Q-head. We'll see how you can drive. Q-head. I've got a feeling I'll regret this as long as I live. And with me driving, that won't be long, either. <laughs> Okay, now drive your car up to this trash can and we'll take it from there. That's no trash can. That's my car. <laughs> up in there, up uh, in there. How'd you make out with the test, Clem? He flunked. And a hundred percent, too. <laughs> now here, miss, you sit in the back seat and I'll get in front with your boyfriend. Yep. All right, Clem, now drive around the block and make it snappy. I've got other things to do, you know. Yeah, and if you were smart, you'd be doing them, too. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Makes the engine pop like that. I'm using high octane kerosene. <laughs> now you're coming to a safety zone. Do you know what that means? Yes, sir. That means look out for the pedestrian. That's right. Then when you see one, try to beat the other cars to him. <laughs> oh, look out, Clem! Look out! That car's pulling out from the curb in front of you. Step on the brake. You know which pedal it is? Yeah, I think it's this one. <laughs> the one next to it. <laughs> Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke. 
because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Joseph Cotton, starring in David O. Selznick's Duel in the Sun, says, quote, I've seen the facts. I'm convinced medical science has proved no other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars. Thus, no other is safer to smoke. I'd rather have a Raleigh. Raleigh's all right. You're right, Joseph Cotton. Raleigh's all right. So try Raleigh's. Enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos, that smoother, more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science now offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. David Forrester and his orchestra now play one of the most famous of Spanish dances. Malaguena by the Cuban composer Lecuona. Forster, chapter 104 of the Skelton Scrapbook is entitled Junior Police. All children should be taught to live a clean and helpful life and respect law and order. This also goes for Junior, the mean widow kid. <laughs> I'm sliding down the banister. Did you remove my face from the bottom step? Yes, I did. <laughs> Junior, 
<laughs> now you're going to get a whipping. No, not after I've been sliding down the banister. It'll be a sport. Give me time to cool off, there. <laughs> Junior, what am I going to do with you? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't you play outside with that rubber ball you found yesterday? No, I might run into the little boy I found it from. <laughs> Junior, you mean that the ball belongs to another boy? Well, sorry. Get the hairbrush so I can spank you. Now, I don't know where it is, but here, you can throw a rock at me. Go ahead. Here, pick it up and pick me away. Junior. No, I'm a bad boy. Go ahead, now. I wouldn't do that. No, I should be punished. Throw the rock at me. Go on. I am wicked anyhow. I am the worst little boy in the world. No, you're not. Yes, you're not. really pretty nice. No, I'm not. No, oh, bless his little. No, don't bless his little. <laughs> I'm bad, that's no, all. Oh, you're very nice, Junior. Well, if you insist. <laughs> Junior, hmm? I- I'm going to take a walk. Do you want to go with me? Why are you always taking walk? Because walking helps you take off weight. You take off weight? Goodness, I is puny now. <laughs> My legs are so bony that little dogs follow me around. <laughs> Catch a bottle, yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Junior. Mm-hmm. Who knows, you may meet some nice little boys on the way. Well, in that case, I better wear me brass knuckles, huh? <laughs> That's enough, young man. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is it a beautiful day? Yes, it is. But I do wish the city would clean up those gutters. Why, didn't Grandpa get home last night? <laughs> Junior, your grandfather got home very early. Not funny. I didn't hear him come there. <laughs> didn't blow the siren this time, did he? <laughs> Look, young man, you're getting too big for your britches. Yes, I know. Every time I bend over, the buttons grab on for dear life, you know. <laughs> It's really embarrassing. Hey, has I grown up much since you first seen me? Oh, yes. yes. I'll never forget when you were born. Really, Grandma? Do you remember it? Yes. It haunts me day and night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look down on the corner there. Look at the kids playing policemen down there. Look they're not there. playing, Junior. They're not? They are policemen. Really? I read in the paper where they're organizing the junior police force. You mean they're out to get me, huh? Oh, <laughs> No, Junior. You see, our town is following the lead of Phoenix, Arizona, and many other cities in forming a junior police force. Oh. These children stand on the street corners and guide other children across the street on their way to school. That's why I'm going to join that, too, I Oh, heard. you can't join, Junior, until you start to school. Start to school? You mean carry books and pencils? Yes, Junior. Study and learn to read and write? Yes. Give the teacher an apple? Yes. Play with the other kids at recess? That's right. You couldn't get me to do that with a straight gaggle. <laughs> If you're anxious to join the junior police, you'd have to promise to do all you can to make your home and your town a safe place to live in. Oh, well, I was getting tired of my chemistry set anyway, you know. <laughs> Who's that driver? No, it's the cop. I knew that they finally cut me down. Let me out of here. Let's take it on the lamb to jig up, Tato. Junior, come back here. I'll meet you when it blows over. I know a doctor that can change my face. <laughs> oh, that's a shine. Good afternoon, madam. Well, what is it you want, officer? I came to see about your little boy. What has he done? Well, I don't know. I don't think he's done anything. You must be a stranger in town. <laughs> I thought maybe he'd like to join our junior police force. Oh, he'd love to. Won't you come in, officer? Thank you. Junior, where are you? Junior, I see you under the sofa. Dual pigeon. <laughs> How are you today, young fella? I'm terrible. I've been in bed two days with three-day measles. <laughs> and there's catching, too. I'll flick some ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a fresh. Now, he's the one that's fresh. He spoke to me, and I don't even know him. Look, Sonny, I, I came to ask you to join the junior police force. Now, you never get... Join the junior police force? That's right. Well, this is not a booby trap, is it? <laughs> no, son, you look like a nice little gentleman. You better take another look, bud. <laughs> oh, Junior, won't it be wonderful you a junior policeman? You mean I can carry a billy club and give people tickets and stuff? Yes, and you wear a red uniform and a badge and blow a police whistle. Oh, I do believe I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Of course, you know, Junior, you're rather young for the force right now, but yeah. we are trying to enlist all the little boys and girls in our program yeah. so they can qualify 
as soon as they start the school. Really? I got news for you. You're a windy old bird, ain't you? <laughs> Who are you waiting till I get to be a junior policeman? And I see some guy dying by and I stop him, boy. Just let me get my hand on him. <laughs> uh-huh. And then uh, what will you do to him? Well, I will say to him, pull over there. Why don't you drive a little slower and see our city? Or would you rather drive faster and see our jail? Or would you rather see some little kid get killed because of your carelessness? You see, Mr. Driver, you have to protect us, little kids, because we have been taught that no one really wants to hurt us. And that's why sometimes we run out in the street, we just don't think. And if you don't stop your crazy driving, you might hit a man, woman, and child, or even a widow animal, regardless of what it is. If you carelessly take his life, you'll be responsible for that lonely feeling that's left in a home when that loved one never returns. And the memory of a lifeless widow body won't be worth the five minutes that you tried to save by speeding. Now, don't get mad, Mr. Driver, when I give you this ticket because it's merely a memo of safety and not a punishment. I'm proud of that, Junior. You is? Well, okay, kiddo, but when I get to be a policeman, there can be no more spanking, you know. Because you molest an officer, you taking the law in your own hands. Now send you so far up the river, kiddo boy. It would take Eskimos to deliver the mail to you. Mail? Starting right now, you must try and be a good little boy so that the junior police will take you in. That's what I'm going to do. And I, right now, I'm going to go upstairs and take that bear trap and that five-inch firecracker out of Grandpa's bed. <laughs> Remember, we'll all be back with your next Tuesday at the same time. Red Skelton, David Forrester, and his orchestra, Anita Ellis, Bernard Felton, Gigi Pearson, Pat McGeehan, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. Until next Tuesday, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now, and thanks for listening. Brown and Williamson invite you to other good listening throughout the week. Here are the Raleigh Room, starring Hildegard tomorrow night, and people are funny with Art Linkletter Friday night. And return with Red Skelton next Tuesday. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. Sir Walter Raleigh, the pipe tobacco that rates superior on all five counts. Check them. A rich, ripe, full-bodied, burly blend. Sir Walter Raleigh, mellowed with rum for extra smoothness, deep down, satisfying goodness. Sir Walter Raleigh, clean smoking right down to the bowl bottom, leaves only a clean, dry ash. Sir Walter Raleigh, crimp cut for slow, even cool burning. Sir Walter Raleigh, keeps home sweet home, the brand of grand aroma. Sir Walter Raleigh, sooner or later, your favorite tobacco. Yes, a favorite in the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, with men everywhere who appreciate quality pipe smoking. Try Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. Red Skelton is brought to you by the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.